Welcome back to Eager Gridless Beaver, everyone. It is a bright and beautiful sunny summer day, and we are in the process of finishing off our tiny house uh, ceiling. We have finally come into some shiplap and are able to complete the work, so we've quickly painted a bunch of white shiplap and, with the help of many helpers, have finished the work. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi, Artemis. sweet. Oh, yay. Hi. Artemis. Hi. Good girl. Do you want Good a belly girl. Do you want a belly the name you'd like to be like oh, a, yeah, a star, of... a star, D minus, uh, J plus. And, I think uh, I want you to put me on the spot. K, K8? No. <laughs> With that work complete, we are now on to the part where we install the shiplap that we have painted and stained onto our wall. We're not going to have to do too many cuts, but there is an angle that we're going to have to take into consideration, and it's uh, where the ceiling meets the uh, wall. And uh, the good news is we have a template already made from the other side of the tiny house where we've already made these cuts in shiplap. So we're just going to use that to make cuts for um, these joints. So we have painted and uh, cut these pieces of shiplap and now it's time to assemble at least the top part of this wall with our colorful shiplap combination. Wow. Wow. Enjoy the decadence that is our Tiny house wall <laughs> decorations. Wow. <laughs> wow. At this point, we have cut and measured quite a bit of shiplap, so we know what we're doing. Um, it's sort of like doing a jigsaw puzzle where you want to make sure that every piece you have ends on a stud so that you have something that can grip. You want those joints to be tight so um, you know you don't want something flopping around. The shiplap itself will add you know um, structure to things but still you don't want something hanging off so that's what you have to do is you've got to make cuts and measure depending on how you want to do it. You know uh, the way that most people do it and the way that we do it is you offset your shiplap so it's uh, you know staggered all the way up and down and as long as you're on stud then you can do anything you want. You can go longer or you can go shorter. It depends upon how you want to do it. The wall is 12 foot wide so what we are trying to do is have pieces that are long enough so that you can have them go all the way to the end piece of the wall and then you don't have multiple exposed pieces because if you have to make a cut where it's not on stud you're gonna have an exposed piece of wood where you don't necessarily want it. So this is what we're using to connect. It is a, what is it, GRK connectors. It has a specific connection point here, um, but the reason I have them is because you can use them for shiplap without pre-drilling um, because the way it's threaded and it uh, holds tight. So that's why I'm using them for this job. And when you're, now what I'm doing there, what I'm talking about is I'm just putting connection points right in between here. Like, so I'm gonna tack it in. Okay, so we are underneath the tiny loft. Welcome back to Eager Gridless Beaver. We are working on shiplap and finishing off this wall. I haven't decided if I'm gonna take this down. This is just tacked up because I needed somewhere to store it where it's not gonna be in our, in our way. But I, I think we have enough to be able to continue down right to the floor. So, A Star is on a little vacation, a wine related vacation. So, um, I'm just going to work, at, pick away at doing this, maybe get the whole wall done. But we're going to create a little gap just so that I can reach in. Maybe more than I would normally have it. But that's okay. Once again, you're installing Shiplap. It's basically puzzle work. You want to make sure that your uh, cuts are not exposed. You know, think about how it's going to be. Something that I've noted when I'm make, working with shiplap is 
it's important to be set up so that you're always cutting with the direction in mind so that you're not holding a piece and then it's supposed to be flipped around. So when you're, when you're working with shiplap, make sure that you're set up always the same way. I'm gonna show this too. This is the one cut where I've messed up so far where I cut on the wrong side. The first, uh, the ceiling, I did it all the time. So it's pretty good actually. Okay, make it. All right, just enough. Okay, looking pretty good though. Got about a fifth of the wall left. We've run out of the blues, mostly. Um, so we're starting to mix in some of the stain. We wanted to do this whole wall with just color, but we're a shiplap, so we're gonna add lib. It's floppy here. I haven't put anything to the face. A star has to see this before it's finalized. <laughs> it's very warm in here. So, and this is an example of, you know, you can see this is where it's screwed in, in between the groove. This is where I've done everywhere and basically just tacked this in because I don't have final approval from A-Star. You can see there's a little bit of give in this. Once we put a screw in the face, which is through this part, it'll solidify things quite a bit more. But I don't have to back it out everywhere. Phase star doesn't like this. That's not true. There's other little pieces over there, but it's gonna be a little wonky. That's okay, babe. Okay. So just just, just hold this. Like this. No, this. When you do that, it just doesn't. I know, but if it's a bowed board, that's why it's happening. We can we can bend it back into place, but I have to get this one first. That's good, right here. It's good. Just hold it right there. Thanks everyone for sticking around and seeing our end product of the tiny house shiplap wall with some colorful decorations. You'll notice that the coloring is more towards the blue and green and white side versus the stain side. That's because A-Star and I want to, want to uh, do this more of a color wall and then have the one remaining wall done mostly in stain. So we have that project coming up uh, very soon. We've got to cut and stain more wood, <laughs> how exciting. But uh, yes, we're on to the next project and uh, stick around and watch some more videos of Tiny House Creation with Eager Gridless Beaver. Thanks for sticking around, everyone subscribe or like or do whatever you're supposed to do for your appropriate social media and uh, we'll catch you next time.